You're listening to WCAT Radio, your home for authentic Catholic programming. Hello, Jesus Seekers. We have to explain to you something very important today in the fabulous chapter 14 of John's Gospel. The Bible that we're talking about, I'm Romuald Simeon. The book is Love Letters from Your Father, where Jesus is teaching each chapter, teaches us connection letters to the Father, where we have to respond in Lectio Divina. It's the Bible. And in this, Jesus is talking to us on Good Friday, that is, you would say Holy Thursday after the supper meal, the Seder meal, but according to Jewish calculation, this is actually Friday because Friday began the evening of Saturday at sundown. And this is a very difficult thing to explain. Jesus goes from one point to another. If you read chapter 14, You may not get the connection. And I'm going to try to pull it together. This is the fourth legacy that Jesus is talking about as he leaves. So he's telling them all the things that they should know. They should remember. And these will come back to them when the Holy Spirit gives them the insight. Now it's a little difficult because they don't have that insight. They're thinking as human beings. And so it takes quite a bit to explain it to them, as as to us, as to us. After all, how can we understand the Trinity? It's not three gods who become one God. It's only one God and three persons. And this very concept is beyond human comprehension. So let's say in the fourth legacy, one of the things that the Lord is talking about, because the, the subject that we're saying today is what is going to happen in a few hours? He is going to pay the penalty for humanity's sins. Pay the penalty for every sin ever committed. From the time of Adam and Eve through the centuries and now our sins the sins of all the world around us, this crazy world around us that ignores God, that is atheistic and secularist, won't even proclaim his existence. These terrible sins and blasphemies that we hear every day, that we have participated, in fact, in our own lives, when we have disowned God, ignored him, refused to worship him, refused to Say, Lord, you are the Lord God, and I'm putting myself ahead of you. I'm turning you into the servant, and I'm the master. I'm telling you what to do. I'm telling you what's really happening. And I'm the one that doesn't know what's happening, even to myself. God knows everything. And since he knows everything, he knows this part that he's going to prologue and help the apostles to understand. They won't really understand what's going to happen in this crucifixion. They don't, won't understand the powers of darkness and how men can be so demonic in killing him. They won't understand it. They will say, he works so many miracles. Why does he call on his father and eliminate them? Why did he call it, use his own powers, if he's the son of God, use his own powers to disappear? Why is he here at all? Why does he tolerate men? Well, God is so good trying to help us to reach salvation, to be the kings of our little universe in this world. 
to understand how to come to him. And he wants us to be with him not only now in creation, but eternally. That, that itself is a, an idea we can work out at all. We do all everything in this world to be happy in this world, to be satisfied in this world, to make other people happy, to enjoy the earth and say that's a great accomplishment, to enjoy the earth where we live. Eat, drink, and be happy. But now the Lord has to teach us what's really going on. First of all, there was God who created this. And Jesus is God. He's the Son of God. He's the image clone of the Father. So when he says these things that the Father sends him and he volunteers to come to our world to straighten it out. It's really the Father sending. The Holy Spirit is already active. He's going to come on us in a special way at Pentecost. More expressively, like Jesus is in his humanity. He shows us who God is. And so the apostles here are so confused. Lord, show us the Father, then we don't have to worry about anything. We won't worry about anything else. We'll know. We'll know. Show us the Father. I am and the Father are one. We, we can't even say it straight in our vocabulary because we don't speak this way. He said, I and the Father are one. No, there's no plural here. I and the Father is one because it's only one. Trinity. The closest we can come to an idea, I think, that I can figure it out. Maybe you can do better. But I'm only 93 and I don't have all the knowledge to know how to express things. I can only do what I have perception of, what I have studied. But I would say the Son is the image clone of the Father. He's not just the image, yet he is the image. But he's also the clone of the Father. He's not the same as the Father, and yet he is the same. I would say same difference. We differ, and yet we're the same. Because that's what Trinity means. All the attributes of God are in the Son of God, in the Holy Spirit. And yet, they are distinct persons. Can't explain that. So, he's saying to everyone around him that have been with him for three years, to see me is to see the Father. I would say not to see him, that would be an objective word, to see he. I and he are one. Therefore, I am divine. All right. We're confused enough. Let's go on. So, I come here to do his will, but his will is my will. It's identical. But I have a nature that is humanized, that is human. And you're going to look at this human nature and it's going to confuse you about what's going to happen. We, God is offended. We say the Father is offended. He can't pay the penalty for our sins. The one who is a perpetrator has to pay the penalty. He has to make it right. The Father who loves and never does anything that is evil, that is rejecting, doesn't reject his creatures either. 
he can commit sin. He can offend himself. So, he sends his son. So, it divided. He sends his son. And the son has humanity. And that humanity connected to the person of, of the son of God is going to pay the penalty. He's going to suffer. He'll be shocked. How could God, the Son, pay the penalty? Because he has humanity. He shows you how humanity is the whole bag of sin, of the sins of the world, of the sins of humanity. He represents humanity. He's the new Adam. He takes all these sins upon himself. And he will pay the penalty. When you look now at what is going to happen in the crucifixion, when you look now at what they're going to do to me, what I'm going to allow human beings who are demonic to pretend they're doing something good by destroying me, by eliminating me. See the contradictions here? You almost like, sound like a series of oxymorons. Almost contradictions. So I have to pay the, pre the price. But price is unlimited because all humanity keeps sinning all the time. They're sinning now in the world enough that you can observe. This goes in every generation. People always say, oh, this is the worst generation, this is going to be the worst thing that ever happened. Look at every generation and you say the same thoughts, the same uh, work, words of people saying, this is the worst thing that could possibly happen. That's what history teaches us. Look into it. I won't give too many examples but just be horrified. Turn the program off. Are we worse than the Romans were when they did not have God? With their slavery? With a person being killed and skinned alive for a crime? Skinned alive while they're alive. Tearing their whole skin off as if it's their clothing. Letting them ride without their outer covering. We don't want to express all these things. Things that happened in the Holocaust that's more recent than that. So, it, there's such no limit to the evil that people will place on each other. No, And the, all these things are sin. No limit to the sins that are being committed, are committed, and committed by Christians who think that three Hail Marys in the confession box pays the penalty for a sin. No. Only Jesus on the cross pays the penalty. When you look at the cross and see what happened to him, you know what you, you, you deserve for those sins you so easily commit in order to enjoy life. In order to enjoy life. Pleasures, possessions, control, power to make your life go on an even keel. The ones who do it most, you consider the persons who are the best. The ones you look up to. Yes. You look at it and say, oh, I don't have all these pleasures. I don't have all these possessions. I don't have all this power over others. No. Most of us do not even have power over ourselves. Because our words say we worship God. We want to do things His way. 
that when's the last time any of us have really done his things his way? Just think about it. Meditate. Because I can't give you all the details. I have enough to worry about in my own life. Yet every farthing has to be paid because you cannot come into God's face your father and your father's embrace he comes to embrace you but he cannot embrace sin see the road to God come to that is beset by sin we're on the wrong road Jesus is the way the truth and the life that's what we're trying to express here and he's trying to express to us. So, and he's saying this, how I am treated, that's how God is treated. That's how they would treat him if he had humanity, if he were a human. Ignore him, insult him, blaspheme, Say how he's wrong. Uh, say how he's stupid and doesn't know how to run the world, how to run our lives. Every condemnation that we have for those that we dislike, we place on God. And if we're treating Jesus this way, he shows us how we're treating the Father. And he shows us well, how we deserve to be treated, but he is doing it for us. Because we have so many sins and so much horror, penalties to pay that we can't possibly pay them. Look at the tortures that people had to undergo because someone was offended. Putting this woman in England for just for harboring a priest putting her between two doors and crushing her to death with stones hearing her cries not just suffocating her but crushing her down that her whole body is one inch of gore and blood that's only one example So, if we treat God that way with sin, proper worship we do to Jesus goes to the Father. Goes to the Father through Jesus Christ our Lord when we do good deeds. So, the Father sends him now to do a good deed, the super deed that is of, of the whole human race of all time, past, present, and future. To pay the penalty if men are to be redeemed. Redeemed means to pay the penalty, pay the price. Be justified. Justification. Be justified before the Lord that we can see him face to face and not see him as a devil coming before the face of God because that's what we have become we can understand who we are it's like if we keep our portraits and then we see a portrait where our sins are on that picture. What a horrible picture we'd have to see. So, he says, as if, and as a father, the people are going to treat me this day, this day, this Good Friday. That's what you would deserve with your sins, because they're doing it because I took your sins on me. I'm innocent. I have no sins. 
But I'm going to show you the love of the Father. I will show you that I will take it upon myself. I'm not going to shirk it. I'm not going to run away. And the way that I accept it is the way that I want the Father to be treated. It's hard to say now, isn't it? The way, the love that I show by accepting your pain, your penalty, preventing you from losing the sight of God, betraying Him for eternity. That's what it means to go to hell. Not to have God in you. So, I want you to love one another as I love you, as I showed love to you. And you see the penalty that I pay for you. And redeem you that you don't have to pay. You don't have to pay. You will get mercy. The Father will come to embrace you through me. If you acknowledge what I do for you, and go through me because I've paid your price. The Son of God, in my humanity, I will suffer for you. Don't talk about the Jews suffering for their sin. It's yourself. Don't suffer about Pilate or Caiaphas. It's horrible enough. We use their names because they're historical. But put your name on it. See that cross that you wear. It's your cross, not his. He carried it for you. For me. So what the Lord is saying to his apostles now, you're going to be horrified. And you'll wonder, why I'm taking this upon myself. And I'm saying to him, the Father loves you so much and I am one with the Father. I am taking it upon myself in order to reconcile you to the Father, to open the road back to the Father. So, let's face it. The Lord is not asking little of us. Oh, I'll say a few prayers. Say an act of contrition. Say Hail Mary. Boom. Say it. Boom. It's all gone. He's saying, you have to change your life to imitate me. You have to show love one to the other. Show love to yourself. Is that so hard? Show love to yourself. You're not showing love by committing sin. You're destroying yourself. You deserve to be crucified. You deserve to be skinned alive. You deserve to have your head cut off. And you escaped each time that Jesus forgives you. So he's asking us not to get nightmares over this. He's asking you to show love. How, what a great gift he gives. And only he can give this gift. So, how can we follow the way of the Lord? The road? Lord, show us the road. Show us the road so we can travel. How do we know where you're going? Well, one thing is, Jesus' road is clear of sin. Our, our by roads, one sin after another, attracts us. We have one addiction after another.
addiction to sin. Addiction to pride. The seven capital sins. Anger. Retaliation. Killing others. Believing we're better than somebody else. And acting on it. We're above them. We're not just human beings. We're not just the children of God. We're special ones. But everybody, to God, everybody is special. Everybody is special. This idea of putting categories of people in every kind of category. Not just a question of race. A question of talent. A question of position. A question of how they appear to us as diverse in this life. Ultimately, we are not diverse. We are diverse and we're not diverse. We're diverse in our talents and accomplishments. We're not really diverse as human beings. We're all what we are in the sight of God. And just that is nothing more. And when he looks down on us, he wants to see his loving children. Sinless. Reaching out for him not for the spirit of this world. So, Jesus is sent to bring us to himself, to the Father, and to himself, but through himself. Through his humanity, his teaching, and his example to know the word the road to God. So he's saying to them, yes, you're going to be horrified to see me, what people are doing to my humanity, but what you see them do to me is what you deserve. I'm taking it upon myself. I don't deserve it. What sin entails is horror. Yet it's what we deserve. So, Jesus is saying now to the apostles, what is my attitude? What attitude do I have? What should you follow? This is what confronts me today. I'm going to go to my death. As I leave this supper room, it's going to be so horrifying to my humanity. If the example I give, my humanity, I will sweat blood. I will be so sorrowful even unto death. That means so sorrowful. It's so horrible that if I were not prevented from dying, I would die from it. But the terrible affliction, a terrible con 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 uh, disease. So, what you do not see right now, you do not see yourself. You're going to abandon me. I'm not going to abandon you. He doesn't say this so many words. He's saying them to absorb it and accept his word because that is a true word. If you saw it in detail, what is going to go on today and what you deserve, you'd be completely horrified. You'd want to never have existed. So what's my attitude now? Right now, as we speak, what is my attitude? What would the world do? What would any normal human being do? Average human being, let's say not normal, because if they're not doing what they're destined for by God, it's not normal, but it's the actual. What would a worldly person do? They're preparing right now as we're talking, 
Judas is betraying me. They're betraying right now to capture me so they could eliminate me. Not just kill me, but me, give a, a terrible example to everybody that I'm not to oppose what they think I am, that I'm a false messiah, that I'm not the son of God. I could flee, I could run away. It was not my time before. And every time they tried to kill me, I didn't f fulfill my work on earth. Now it's fulfilled. It's going to be completely fulfilled. This will cap it. This will show that I do love, that I did come for mankind to return to the Father. So I'm not going to run away. No, no, no. This is a time of no. I will not do what the world wants. I'm answering no to each thing they say. And I will say yes, yes, yes to the Father's plan. Because the penalty must be paid. For there is no heaven. No one could go to heaven to see the face of God. To see the face of his Father. Of creator. Heaven has no sin. What would the world do? Defend and retaliate? Oh, protect myself. So you want to kill me? I'll kill you first. If I don't get you, I'll come back at you and make sure that you pay the penalty. Retaliation. But that's what human heroes do. Or what else? Cave in? Submit to men who are evil? I cannot submit to evil. I will allow you to do it to me. Do your worst. I will not cave in. I will not run away. I, you capture me, I am your subject, your victim. So the Lord is saying, I will face all the gates of hell that men represented. I will accept it all for the love of saving all men equally, the whole human race, not just Jews, not just friends, not friend, persons who now come, they see a miracle and they come. Everyone, this is for everyone, the whole world, everyone from now on is special to their father. You always have been special, but now you're special, special, and you'll know you're special. All are equally special. Not one over the other. I will face it and accept it. Right now I'm telling you. I will face it and I will accept it for the love of saving all humanity. I will witness it. No matter what you do to me. The whole world will see it. The whole world will know it. I will submit without defense. I will not use my Son of God power to prevent it. You have to see what sin will do. I resign myself to fulfill the prophecies. The prophecies say that the Messiah will be the suffering servant, the suffering slave to take the penalty upon himself. So it's necessary to go through the complete 
program. The complete plan. Man deserves hellfire. He deserves destruction. He deserves obliteration for his sin. But I'll do it for you. I don't want you obliterated. I don't want you to suffer. And I'll go wherever my mission and road takes me. And that's where it's taken me. The time is now to witness and testify that the Father is worthy of pure worship. Love does not count the cost. Whatever it costs, the nature and the extent must must endure to bring grace and salvation to you and me. Jesus says, I will pay it. Repent. Be reborn become my image. I am the Father's image, you become my image. What are you willing to pay for true love to someone who really loves you, who loves you totally, that he thought of you from eternity, that he was going to put you into this world at this time and these circumstances? And not only that, you pay, you go along with this trial and you worship him properly and you come to his side and become his image you will have eternal life be granted to you I, Jesus adopt you as a human son of God the prodigal son who returns. This for every human sin, millions, trillions, and infinity, one by one, men still ignore God, they're thankless to God because they're thankless to me, Jesus. They reject me, they ridicule me. People blasphemously reject Jesus. They reject me. Down on the cross. The cross is not an emblem of salvation, an emblem of acceptance. They're afraid to put a cross around their neck. They're afraid to put a cross on a church, on their houses, to proclaim Jesus. He's the one ignored. And no one defends him. Who protests? And who gets out in the street saying that Jesus must be proclaimed? No. We must be proclaimed. Our human attitudes must be proclaimed. And we say, oh, these are wonderful things that we protest or demand. Here we are afraid of confusing anyone, and we confuse ourselves. You put our interests primary over God. You put our recreations, our pleasures, fear to offend others. Oh, I, I can't go to Mass, I have to go to the ball game today. Fourth Commandment. Keep the holy day holy. Close the churches. Lock them up. Be afraid someone's going to seal the poor box. Nobody's in church on Sunday. If people were treating the church as a temple of God, why should it ever be empty? Especially on Sundays when you're not working. When that's supposed to be 
going to human activities. No, that's the day to have pleasures. It's a pleasure day, a human pleasure day. It's not a day that you can worship God and recall, recall, and commemorate the sacrifice and the the price he paid for our sin. So why, Jesus says to his apostles, why do I tell you all this? Because if you thought about it, this should be you. You can't do enough for your own sins. I'm going to do it for you. I show you the Father's love and he does it through me, his son. He has sent his son, given him humanity to show how much he values you. Today he's going to, to show you how much he values his son. It'd be as if he's abandoned him because sin is not to be affirmed. It's to be abandoned. But I die on the cross to cleanse you and give, make you reborn in my open heart. That's the first canal to salvation to be reborn, to be a son of the Father. My blood is upon you. It's the blood that you spill. Accept it, imitate me, and you'll be white as snow. The penalty that I paid today is what men deserve and what they have earned by not doing God's will, but their own animal will. Put a God aside, God is saying, he's calling you back. He takes us on and once again, gives us how many chances? Two chances, 77 chances, chance that we could come and imitate him. So listen to his word, listen to his word in the Bible. God has sent you a love letter that's written in blood. Love letter says, I love you, I will die for you. When you say that you want to come home, come home. That's all I'm doing. I'm shepherding you to come back to the pasture, to come home to your Father who loves you from eternity, created you in order that you may find eternal happiness. Happiness that I has not seen or the mind thought of. Can we say it in one word? Put your Father first. Put Jesus first. Thy will be done on earth by me. The way Jesus said it, and the way he observed it, the way he modeled it, and with the strength of the Holy Spirit to know that I will not give up and give in to worldly attitudes. God bless you seekers. Let's pray for each other and pray for me. I pray for you.
because there's no prayer except to Jesus Christ, our Lord, who loves us without measure. Hello, God's Beloved. I'm Annabelle Mosley, author, professor of theology, and host of Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. I invite you to listen in and find inspiration along this sacred journey we're traveling together to make our lives a masterpiece and, with God's grace, become saints. Join me, Annabelle Mosley, for Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. God bless you. Remember, you're never alone. God is always with you. Thank you for listening to a production of WCAT Radio. Please join us in our mission of evangelization. And don't forget, love lifts up when knowledge takes flight.